Jesus in the house, come on. Come on, celebrate God, celebrate God, celebrate God. Give the Lord a shout! And no, I believe we have youth in the house, right? I believe we have youth in the house. Come on, jump on your feet and shout the big God! Once again, for the grace and the privilege we've received. And the first thing I will want to do here is to give the glory back to God for everything He has done, for what God is doing, and for the promises of what He will do in our lives. And also, I want to appreciate our Father in the Lord. Reverend Easter Christy Lady for being there for us always. Can we celebrate him, please? Thank you, sir, for always being there for us. And also, just like the youth president mentioned earlier, Reverend uh, Oye Leko, thank you so much, sir. We appreciate you. And we want to celebrate our mother. Mommy, thank you so much. Pastor Mrs. Christy Lady, thank you so much. All the executives, all the diaconates, and the youth and also the church at large. I pray that the grace of God will be multiplied over our lives in Jesus' name. Today, we'll be considering a very interesting uh, theme for the youth week. I am the living water. And to the glory of God, last year, we talked about the bread of life. And I believe that there is no way you will eat and you will not drink water. Abby, is it possible you eat and you won't drink water? Uh -huh. So that means God wants us to enjoy a balanced life. When we consider the bread of life, and now we are considering living water. If you know that God will fill you, come on, shout! Glory! Hallelujah! We bless the Lord for the wonderful opportunity he gave us to participate in this magnificent work as we consider another I am of Jesus Christ. When we consider the topic I am the bread of life last year, the Lord graciously granted us the capacity to consistently eat the bread of life for productivity, for growth, and destiny fulfillment. This year, the Lord is so gracious unto us again as we consider another dimension of I am 
of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And now, if we go back to the uh, Old Testament, the book of Exodus, when we consider chapter number three, where uh, there was a conversation between God and Moses, and when God was asking him to go, he said, if I tell the people of Israel, and they ask me, who sent me? What should I tell them? There are so many gods with names. And the Lord said, tell them, I am sent you. In, in Yoruba, uh, if we, we, you want to enter your house, if you want to enter your house, and probably someone is inside and you are knocking and you are asking, who is that? You say, I am the one who, in your Bawani, a menu. And back in the days, uh, people will tell you that. So that is the name of God. So which means we can say, when we are saying, I am the living water, we can say, God is the living water. Hallelujah. And while we are looking at that today, uh, we'll be having some practical examples of which we believe that God will minister to us in the mighty name of Jesus. I am his God, and this can be traced back to the book of Exodus, like I mentioned earlier. Now, the living water signifies daily and eternal refreshment. No matter how dead and hopeless a man's situation is, an encounter with Jesus Christ will revive such life. Now, if you look at the book of Job, Job chapter number 14, verse 7, and nine. Seven to nine says, For there is a hope for a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Through the roof thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground. Yet, through the scent of water, it will bud and bring forth both like a plant. Now, one of the amazing things about and the goodness of our Lord Jesus Christ is the goodness of Jesus Christ can meet everybody's needs. Alright? And when we look at John chapter number 4 that has been read to us earlier or if we go back to chapter number 3 and we are descending to chapter number 4 we will observe or we will look into it we will notice that Jesus was coming and his decision was to pass through Samaria. Alright? Uh, please follow me. And I, I want to believe that at every point in time, many of us, we've been in a situation whereby you were uh, so thirsty and at that moment, no matter what anybody or, any, or what people are telling you, you don't feel like you know, that is what you need. But the moment you take water, you feel a sense of refreshment inside of you. And once that is being done, you are good to go. You are ready for anything that wants to come after. Now, when Jesus was passing through that place, and there was an encounter with a woman of Samaria, we know the story. But the question that I want to ask there is that... I remember during the Yoruba section, uh, the person that the Lord used to uh, minister over there, uh, Deacon Kolawali, he made mention of something that normally, uh, should I use the word in the olden days? Because now we have uh, water flowing into our house. But back in those days, when people want to, our mothers, if they want to go and fetch water, they either go early in the morning or in the cool of the evening. Hardly will you see anybody um, in, the, in, the, in the around 12, 1 o'clock to go and fetch water. No. But so amazing that why would this woman decided to go and fetch at that moment? Another thing that I want us to consider before we move on is that the scriptures made us to understand that the disciples, all of them, went to go and get food and what to drink. I don't understand. How many people do we have? Let us say we have 12 disciples there now. Alright? And all the 12 disciples 
decided to take a bus from uh, Obadikoro here to get to my 12, I mean to my 12 to go and buy what to eat. I, I don't understand. And only Jesus was left alone. Now, I believe that at every point in time, when God wants to do something in our life, there are some people, they are not bad person. But at that moment, what God is saying is, I want to walk this through with you alone. So let me quickly say this. Maybe at a point you felt, oh, you have people all around you. And at a point you felt maybe some people, they deserted you and all. So far you are walking in God's plan and purpose for your life. Whoever that is with God is with majority. Hallelujah. Now, if you're looking at that uh, phrase again, now the scripture established in John 4, 1 to 14, that Jesus is the only one, that is the, the only savior that we have, all right, that can give living water to all thirsty sinners. And from this context, we can say that one of the things that interests Jesus is for him to seek sinners that are not even looking after him. Now, Jesus decided to walk up to this lady and establish a conversation with her. I just imagine, let's say, uh, we, we know how Jews and Samaria back then, how they used to you know, relate with one another, the conflict and everything. No relationship. Jesus is not just an ordinary uh, Jewish master. I mean, people know him as Rabbi. Now, if someone is coming and, you know, just to see Jesus having a dialogue with that woman, and don't you forget, people of Samaria, they know the story of that woman, right? But that woman, totally, for her to decide to come to the well at that point, must have decided to orchestrate herself from every other person. So he chooses to come to the river to fetch all alone. Women will come to the river together. They hardly come alone. Like three, four people will come in the morning to go and fetch water. Three, four, five people will go in the evening to go and fetch water. But the scriptures made us understand that that woman was there alone. And that was when Jesus had an encounter with her. Now this woman never approached Jesus and said, Master, I really want to know your God. There was no such conversation. Nothing of such. Now, she was focusing on her business. What she decided to do then was to go and fetch water. And that was the exact thing Jesus met her doing. Alright? And then Jesus asked for a drink. We may look at various reasons why she decided to come all alone and all. We are not looking at that now. Now, the first thing Jesus did was to establish a conversation and partnership with her. Now, I will first take this point. As a believer, God has put us in a position whereby we should be able to approach people that they've already written themselves off, that they cannot be a partaker of what God has said or is said to do. It is my duty, it is your duty to reach out to them and to make sure we bring them in to enjoy that blessing hallelujah now another point that I have here is that this gift is free to everyone now when we look at that particular scripture again I want us to look at uh, chapter chapter 4 verse 10 and Jesus answered and said to her if you knew the gift of God and who is it is who says to you give me a drink you would have asked him and he would have given you living water it is a free gift it is not something oh, you, you work for or a reward or something you think oh, you are qualified for it is a free gift give me a drink and you would have asked him he would have given you the living water living water 
let me drink of thee. Holy Spirit, let me drown in you. Living water, let me drink of thee. Holy Spirit, let me we need to consider here is that this living water quenches every and any form of thirst whatever it is your own thirst is whatever it is that you think needs to be quenched when you have the spirit of God inside of you it will quench it I don't know whatever it is you you are trusting God for or the position you are. I just want to remind you that the Holy Spirit has been made available not just for one person, for everybody. So it is your desire and your decision that makes him to come in and to dwell, to reside inside of you as the living water that flows. There is no how you can take you can take a water and uh, Dickinson, can you help me with that water? There is no how you can take a water and you think it's going to quench your thirst forever. Now this is the water I'm holding. If you are thirsty and you take this water, you take this water now. In the next three, four, five hours, what will happen again? You will be thirsty. So you drink whenever you are thirsty. Anytime you are thirsty again, you drink. As a believer, we shouldn't just be living like that. Thank you, sir. And this is what I mean. Don't just put yourself in a position whereby you only come when you want to receive. Now, the desire of God is that inside of you, there will be a flowing out of that river. It is only what you have in that you can discharge, that you can dispense. Now, the desire of the Lord, of the Master, is that you have that river inside of you and you can dispense it for others to do what? To be a partaker. I said it earlier. This water is not restricted for just an individual. It is available for everybody. All we need to do is to make that decision. That Lord, fill me. Lord, fill me. Lord, fill me. of God 
is that when men see you, when men see you, whatever form of thirst that they have, when they reach out to you, there is a refreshment to their soul. Why? Because you have the Spirit of God inside of you. Because you have the Spirit of God inside of you. Why you can please have your seat. Whoever drink of the water that I give him shall never thirst. But the water that I give him will become in him a well of spring, springing up to eternal life. That is one interesting thing. That water, the abundance or the filling of of the Holy Spirit is not just for a moment. That oh, we are we are in a season now, and the Holy Spirit will just fill you for that season, and, and that's all. No, the Scripture made us understand that. It is forever, eternal. And the word of God is true. The word of God never lies. And for as many people that believe, he said he will give to them. When Jesus says that whoever drink of the water that I give him will never taste, now this is what Jesus Christ is talking about number one we I mean you and I who have drunk from this living water are content with him because we realize that he has delivered us from sin and condemnation media can you please give me a revelation 8 1 now for as many people that you have at any point you've released yourself to the power of the Holy Ghost and drank that water You've been delivered. Media, Romans 8, verse 1. We have been delivered from sin and condemnation. I want everyone to read it together. That is what I'm asking. Romans 8, verse 1. I want us to read it together. Are we ready? Now we go. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. There is therefore no condemnation whatsoever. Why? Because you have been restored. You've been renewed by God. He has given us eternal life so nothing will ever be able to take that away from us because we have that living water inside of us it is a sign of eternity we have that in us and nothing nothing can take us away nothing will take us away and also there is an abundance of joy that extinguishes all pain a joy that snuffs out every gift. If you look at Isaiah chapter number 12, I think verse 3, was saying that with what? With what? With joy. With joy. Draw out water from the well of salvation. With joy. Another point is, as his children, we are always in his loving care. We can see that from the book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the word knoweth us because it knew him not. 
Is that not a blessing to be called the sons of God? Another beautiful thing about having this living water dwelling residing inside of us is that he has bestowed upon us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms through Jesus Christ. And we can see that in the book of Ephesians chapter number 1 verse 3. Now we have the word, the word of God inside of us which is, which is like, like a living water that flows. that there is always a level of knowledge and revelation we all need as we end, as we journey with the Lord. We all need as we journey with the Lord. And now if, if we look at the book of, okay, now Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knowest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him and he would have given thee living water. Now, I want us to quickly consider what Paul said uh, in Ephesians chapter chapter 3. Now, Apostle Paul says that, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection 
and the fellowship of his suffering being confirmed to his death if by any means I may attend to the resurrection from the dead we need to grow deeper and in, in growing deeper that means you need to know God deeper let me know you <laughs> more and more about here, the living water is the salvation that the Holy Spirit imparts. And we can say it is the Lord himself dwelling in believers. Now, we said it earlier that there must be a partnership between us and God to be able to be a, a, a vessel that can contain all that we have inside of him or ourselves, that living water, which can actually flow out, that is, it can be a dispenser that gives out to others. All right? Now, for as many people, that it is your desire to have that living water flowing through you and inside of you, why don't you come to Jesus? Get to know him. Desire to know him. Desire to know him. We must know who Jesus is. Now, and this is talking about, about our faith. That is, you must have faith in Christ and this requires that you need to know who Jesus is. And the beautiful things about this is you don't have to even be uh, a, a pastor. You don't have to attend seminary. You don't have to register that here. Uh, Reverend sir, uh, so I want to go to seminary because I want to know about God. No. We have men of God in the house that can guide you and also, you have the word of God. You can put yourself, yourself before the Lord and infuse you. If it were to be that, all of us must go to seminary before we know God. Ah, uh, What do you think will happen in the seminary? <laughs> eh, since I start going to seminary, eh, our president decided to go to seminary. Dr. Heritage too, saying, Daddy, so I want to know God more, so I need to go to seminary, you know. No, not until we do that. And I want to let us know, I want us to take Holy Spirit to receive this gift of God that is the living water we must ask we must ask God for it as you are seated you can just begin to communicate to the Lord and Lord please this is my life I bring my life to you that you should please fill me up Lord please fill me up from the book of John chapter number 7 and I will take verse 37 37b that is the second part of 37 it says if anyone tests, let him come to me and drink 
he who believes in me as the scriptures have said out of his heart out of his belly will flow river of the living water so the question is do you believe as well let it flow let it flow let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Flow, let it flow right here, right now. Let it flow, let it flow. 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 flow, let it flow.
a sign of total surrender the Lord I empty myself before you pour yourself fill me up I empty myself I open myself up before you Lord, I open myself up before you. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. 